Hey everyone, you've seen in the prior slides where I input different types of loading and the shear and moment diagrams were automatically plotted. That's because I have predefined the formulas and equations for MathCAD to follow. So the equations I made will calculate the shear and moment at any given distance or at any given point when a beam is subjected to any type of loading. So the loading may be a uniformly distributed load like this. It can be at, it's denoted W and it can be at length LW or it can be along the entire stretch of the beam length. Another type of loading I consider is W1, which is a triangular distributed load in this configuration. It can be at length LW1 or it can be along the entire stretch of the beam length. Another triangular load, distributed load I consider, is W2 in this configuration and can also be at any length. And I also consider two point loads, P1 and P2, at any distance or at any given point of the beam length. So the input data that we will be needing are the loads, P1, P2, W, W1, and W2, so if you're only concerned of a one-point load and a one uniformly distributed load, then you can just put zero into this other input data. We also need the distance from support one for all the loads that we have. So we need AW, A, AW1, that's the distance from R1 to your triangular distributed load W1. We also need A1, which is the distance from R1 to P1. We also need AW, which is the distance from R1 to your uniformly distributed load W. We also need A2, that's the distance to point load 2. And lastly, we need AW2, that's the distance to your W2 triangular distributed load. And then finally, we need the entire length of the beam. So those are the input data that we need. So for the equations, these are applicable for a simply supported beam or a beam to beam end connections and it's also applicable for fixed to free end connection or for cantilever beams. So let's get into the formulas. The first things first we need to find out the reaction forces and moments at supports and these are the three basic equations we need. First equation is a summation of all forces must be equal to zero so that's your distributed load W times LW plus your triangular load W1 that's the area Triangular load W2, that's the area, plus P1 plus P2 minus reaction force R1 minus R2 must be equal to zero. So we can use this equation to solve for either R1 or R2. The second equation that we need is summation of moments about R1 must be equal to zero. So that's MA plus MA1 plus MA2. These are the distributed load areas times the moment arm with respect to R1. Plus P1 times the moment arm A1 plus P2 moment arm A2 minus R2, the moment arm is L with respect to R1, minus MR1 if we have a moment at this support. And we can use this equation to solve for either R2 or MR1. And the third equation that we need is summation of moments about R2. So MB, MB1, MB2 are the areas and the moment arms with respect to R2. Plus P1 times moment arm L minus A1, plus P2, the moment arm is L minus A2, minus R1 times the moment arm L, minus MR2 if we have an end moment at this support. So we can use this equation to solve for either R1 and MR2. If the beam is a fixed free end connection or a cantilever, meaning fixed here and free here, it means that our MR2 is equals to zero because there's no resisting moment here and R2 is also equals to zero because this is a free end. So we can use the summation of forces equation we defined earlier to solve for R1. We can also use the summation of moments about R1 to solve for MR1. If the beam is a simply supported beam or beam to pin connection, there are no resisting moments at supports. So we can say that MR2 is zero and MR1 is zero. So we can use the summation of MR2 equation defined earlier to solve for R1 since we know that MR2 is zero. And we can also use summation of forces to solve for R2. Since we now know the reaction forces and end moments, we can now define an equation formula for shear at any given distance x. The equation for shear is defined as the sum of all forces within that distance x. Note that Vw, Vw1, and Vw2, these are the distributed load forces which correspond to their areas. I put a condition that x 
must always be greater than the distance of the forces such that the equation will only include the forces within that distance x. So if x, for example, is under here, the forces outside will not be included in the sum of all forces. That's the meaning of the condition. So for example, P1 will be included if x is greater than A1, and P2 will be included if x is greater than A2, and R2 will be included when x is equals to L. For the distributed load forces, VW, VW1, VW2, I purposely group them here because if I put them directly into this equation, it's going to be a very lengthy equation. So the forces of the distributed load correspond to the areas. So for example, for VW, it's W times the length. So the length would be X minus AW, X minus AW. But if your X is somewhere here, it means your x minus aw will be this distance, and that is greater than the length of your distributed load. That's why I put minimum so that it will take the length of the distributed load if it exceeds that length. And the condition is that x must be greater than aw. So for vw1 force, that's the area, which is 1 half base times height. So the base, for example, if x is somewhere here, so the base would be x minus aw1. So this is your length or the base but if x is somewhere here then it's outside the length of your w1 load then it will take the original length which is lw1 that's why i put minimum and the height of this triangle can be taken by ratio and proportion so that's w1 divided by lw1 times the minimum of this base that gives you this height so if you take a look at W2, the area of W2, if x is here, it becomes a trapezoid. So this length is equal to your x, if this is your x, if this is your x, x minus aw2, this is the length of your trapezoid. So the trapezoid area is one half your length times the longer height plus the shorter height. So that's why I put W2, that's the longer, plus this expression is the shorter height. So this shorter height can be interpolated by taking the ratio and proportion as well. So now that we have defined the equation for shear formula at any given distance x, let's define the equation for the moment at any given distance x. So the equation formula for moment at any given distance x is defined as this. It looks like a very lengthy equation, but this is basically the summation of forces times its corresponding moment arm when we take the moment about x. So the sum of all moments about x will be equal to r1 times x, r1 times x, minus vw, which we defined earlier, times the moment arm of vw, which is x minus aw minus one half of the uniform distributed load distance. And I also put the condition there that x must be greater than aw. So the moment arm is, if this is where the x is, then the moment, the center of your load would be there. So this would be your, sorry for the drawing, so this would be your moment arm. So that moment arm corresponds to x minus aw minus one half of this. Okay, so for vw, vw1, we minus the moment vw1, this is the area which we defined earlier, times the moment arm of VW1, which is VWA1, and it's defined as this. This defines x minus AW1 minus two thirds of its length. So if x is here, for example, if x is here, then the center of the triangle would be two thirds, would be here. This would be your, oops. So the center, that length, would actually be so lousy drawing. <laughs> That's two third of L W one. So the moment arm would be this one. So the moment arm is x minus a w one minus two thirds of your length. So for this triangle, if x is located somewhere here, then the moment would be v w two times the moment arm v w a two. So VW2, we defined that area earlier, and VWA2 is the moment arm, which is x 
minus aw2 so the moment arm would be from here at the center to here so that's the moment arm so that's x minus aw2 minus one third so that's one third one third of your triangle that's the center of your triangle then we also minus the moment of your point load which is p1 times the moment arm so the moment arm is x minus a1 so that's the moment arm of your p1 if x is here and then minus p2 times the moment arm of p2 so the moment arm of p2 is this one that's x minus a2 and this condition is x must be greater than the distance a2 by any distance of this load so that they can be included in the moment summation and then for r2 the moment arm of r2 is l minus x so that's the length of the beam minus x and then finally we minus mr1 the moment at r1 and we plus the moment at r2 if we have these moments but for simply supported beams the value of these moments <coughs> is equal to zero so, so there you go we have to find the equation formula for the shear at any given distance x and the moment at any given distance x so based on the input data that we provided the equations that we created will give us this plot, the moment and the shear diagram. That's based on the input that we provided. If you want only the uniformly distributed load, we don't want a point load. Let's put that to zero. And this is the zero. We also don't want this. And that. And then the length will still be 10 meters. It's okay not to change this because anyway, this is... Um, if your load is zero, then this will not matter. So for, if you want the uniform distributed load to be along the entire stretch of the beam length, then we can change this length to 10 meters. And then we will have to change this to zero because it starts at the beginning. So for this kind of loading, we will get this moment and shear diagram. So how do we plot this? So let's try to plot. So we will define the value of x from zero to the length. Of the beam, but we can change this and then we change this to 0.5 meter and then we'll use the insert plot function and then we'll put vx here and that's in kilometer and then we'll put x here that's in meter let's see if we can, so that's the shear so we can change the color of your shear force that and we can also uh, thicken using that and then we want to add the moment so we just add a trace moment in the unit so that's your moment and we can change the color of the moment to green <laughs>